Hello. Today I am presenting our latest product, Privilege Account and Session Management. You can see here the uh, portal. This is a product that's being delivered on-prem to the customer. Its purpose is to uh, manage for now RDP and SSH connections to, to your servers and delegate access to them. You can see I'm logged here with John. John is an administrator account that has two servers for now, an Ubuntu server, connectable by SSH and the Windows Server 2016 that you can connect uh, in via RDP. So at the first glance, this allows John to simply connect to the servers. So this is an RDP connections connection. And you can see that, well, you can transfer file like this. So you can see I have a, a shared drive, john at company.com on this computer with the file in here, trim one that I've uploaded. I can just uh, get it from here like this and it will download to my computer or I can upload a new one. Let's upload trim two, upload successfully. And now if I refresh the page, it's on the shared drive and I can just get it on the desktop. So I can use this shared drive to transfer file between my host and uh, via my connecting. Now, this allows John to connect to the servers, like I said before. However, uh, the power of the product is in the delegation part. So uh, John can create multiple types of accounts into the portal. I have created for the sake of this example, two uh, local users, Simon and Nick. Now the authorization mechanism allows the creation of local user. Active Directory user, provided that you configure the LDAP or LDAPS connection. And it also allows uh, login via Azure Active Directory. So you can uh, use the Microsoft Authenticator to allow users into the portal. So uh, let's take Nick, for example. Nick, if he logs into the platform, he won't see anything. So he'll be, he'll be able to go into the connections or connection group but there'll be nothing display for Nick unless we give him access. And let's say we want Nick to access our Linux server. So we can give permission to Nick. We can give permission either to a user or to a role. Let's say Nick is part of the IT admins uh, department. So we can create a role IT admin, add Nick to it, and just give request to the role. So everybody in the IT admin role will be able to access the server. But for now, let's just use Nick. I can add Nick. And let's say I want to know exactly when Nick wants to use this. So I don't give him the right to use the connection. I give him the right to request the connection. I'm not using view or full because I don't want Nick to access the username and the password of this connection. So this Ubuntu server, if we edit it, you'll see that is being it's a simple ssh connection via username and the password it's just a virtual machine for testing so the password is just one but i don't want nick to know this so i just gave him request permission now if nick logs in let's go in with nick i have the safe credentials and i have disabled the 2fa for for nick uh, for the simplicity of the uh, of the demo. So Nick now under resources, connections, can see the Ubuntu server. He cannot edit it. He cannot do anything with it. Instead of the connect button, he has a request. So Nick can request connection. He can set an expiry date. This is optional. No expiry date means forever. So let's say he needs until tomorrow at noon. I need to install something. At this point, a request has been made. You can see it under the request tab that's ongoing, has not been approved. Under the connection is still the request button. If you try to request again, he will just cancel the old one and override it. So if I go back to John, uh, John has two factor. We'll just 
type this code. John will see now that he has a request. He can also get an email if he configures the, the emailing part. He can approve the request and now Nick will have access to the server until tomorrow at 12. Going back to Nick, you will see that no more requests are here. You can show the old ones that has been approved. Under connection, this, bu this button is now a connect one. He still cannot access the server credentials. The, the UI doesn't have them. So if you click connect, Nick gets a token and he is connected to this uh, Ubuntu server. So we can do, let's say you can do a page top. He's looking around. He does something clear. Now he logs out. Now going back to John. John has now the ability to see who used this connection. So if you go to view sessions, he will see that Nick connected at 9.30 a.m. It took 18 seconds for the connection and he also has the video recording for it. And you can see Nick just running an HTOP at some point, looking around and clearing the screen. This allows a full audit log, so, so you have control on who uh, connects to what server. You have granular access, timed access to, um, to the servers, and flexibility of it, because you can grant Nick permission to a server. You can grant a group of users role to a server, for example, IT admins, or you can use the feature called connection groups, Ubuntu server is a connection part of the Linux server. So you can use this group Linux server and add, let's say, Simon, the other user. And let Simon have just let him have indefinite use access. At this point, Simon will have access to the Linux server connection group. That means no matter how many servers I add here, RDP or SSH, this is just a naming that I provide, Simon will have access to it. As for extra features, you will see the settings part that you can control the Active Directory settings, the recordings, the Azure login part, and the SMTP provided that you, uh, you will want to receive emails up on upcoming requests password resets, two-factor authenticator resets, and so on. Uh, you'll also have audit logs to see the changes to the connections. You'll see, uh, for example, going, let's, let's go backwards. I added use permission for Simon on the Linux server research group. And here I updated permission with the status approved when I approved the permission request to Nick. So you'll see everything the users do as an admin so i can see even when nick um, one applied for the permission request you'll have a certificates tab here you can define uh, certificates for your ssh connection and just use them in the connection edit and you also have a very nice feature that requires ldap setting uh, that we call just in time. So how this works, uh, if you enable just in time and you have LDAP configured, what's going to happen is that we're not going to let you fill in any username or password for the server. Since you're using just in time, the PANSM server will automatically generate a username for this machine via LDAP, allow you to, uh, at the moment of the connection, and destroy that user when the connection ends. Moreover, you can choose just-in-time elevated access that will make the generated user an admin. So you'll have admin rights on the server. Everything will be logged, of course, uh, and the recording of session is optional. That was the 
very high level overview of this product. Uh, this will uh, arrive in the form of uh, virtual appliances. It will support virtual appliances for Hyper-V, VMware and VirtualBox uh, that you can just use to deploy uh, in the network that you have the servers to, uh, to manage. Thank you very much.